Well, the Syrian Archive is a project that collects, verifies, preserves visual evidence of human rights violations in Syria specifically. We have started in 2014 while well, I was working there uh, with the Syrian journalists and human rights uh, defenders who were uh, filming um, human rights violations in video and photo as it was happening in Syria. There was a lot of user-generated content, but the problem was that was this user-generated content was not uh, verified. Um, it was really hard to find and it was scattered on many different platforms. So there was a huge importance to make sure that this visual evidence, if it's a video or a photo, is contextualized. It has metadata, uh, people understand um, uh, what it is and uh, for which case it can be used. And it's centralized somewhere where other parties can use it, uh, advocacy purposes or accountability purposes. We try to, um, I guess, close this loop between the people who are submitting the videos and us as researchers. A lot of people have taken a lot of risks towards uploading those and by preserving them uh, and archiving them and trying to standardize the way that we're doing this, we're also trying to honor the risks that they took and preserve the uh, memories of, of these experiences. Before we started collecting any of the videos, we had to first um, make a database of the kinds of sources that we could use for content. Um, so we have about 300, 400 different sources that we're using, mostly social media channels, things on YouTube, things on Twitter, things on Facebook, and, and so on. We started a couple of years ago just with an extremely uh, kind of very simple workflow that worked for us in a certain way. It's uh, ended up being a bunch of bash scripts on a server. And currently we're trying to codify the way that everything is working into a way that other people could also use the same process. With Prototype Fund, we uh, got some funding to be able to um, write down our methodology in an open source format, make it publicly available. We have been contacted by uh, various human rights groups from Pakistan, from Palestine, from Egypt, who would like to do a similar thing in terms of um, preserving uh, visual evidence, user-generated content online about human rights violations. A lot of the tools and techniques that we're using can be easily used in other kinds of environments, but they have to be modified. Um, so putting it in an open source format means people can easily um, replicate it, they can um, just kind of copy it. Um, but they can also change it to, to their unique needs and to their environment.